All right, so you want to learn how to really optimize your rearmed heroes. You want to really get the most out of your skill fodder. Then you've come to the right place. I'm going to show you guys some tips and tricks on how you can really, really deck your barracks out and get the most out of your pulls. So we're going to take a look at some rearmed heroes today and possible skills you can be giving them to just pass around to the rest of your barracks. The rearmed heroes were such a fantastic idea. I mean, this is the way skill inheritance should have worked since day one, in my opinion. <laughs> just being able to give skills to the rest of your units without losing the unit that is being foddered. So, of course, in Fire Emblem Heroes, you have to make a decision if you want to kill off a brand new sparking good new unit and give them to an older unit so that you can beef up the old unit with some new powerful skills but in the process you're losing out on that really good new unit so a lot of people stray away from sacrificing premier fodder for example the fallen female byleth that you would get distant attack and speed solo from is like one of the best god swords in the game so it does come at a steep price trying to give her skills out to another unit but what if I were to tell you it wouldn't just be one unit getting Violet skills it would basically be every unit <laughs> makes it a little bit more incentivized at that point right so what we're gonna be doing here today is just taking a look at some good skills you can give to these rearmed heroes and really maximize the fodder that you're getting out of them so that every single time you pull a copy of your rearmed hero, you're just instantly building one of the other units laying around in your box. So we're starting with Ganglot here because she is the only infantry melee type as far as rearmed heroes are concerned. That's bound to change eventually. But considering how many of the other rearmed heroes have been rerun by this point, and the fact that Ganglot has been off limits, it seems like they are well aware of how disgusting the skills you can give to Ganglot actually are. I mean, it would literally take one female Byleth to turn Ganglot into a god of fodder. You're instantly building, like, <laughs> every single god unit for the rest of ever, every time you pull Ganglot. So, Fallen Byleth... The example that I wanted to bring up, we're going to take a look at a bunch of units as well that just have a clinic of good fodder skills and who should be first dibs for your rearmed heroes to get their grubby little paws on and get all the good skills. So Fallen Byleth has no shortage of good stuff. She has distant counter and distant attack speed solo. She's currently the only unit that has distant attack speed solo and it's going to find itself on like every god sword build and god lance and god axe it's also available to all melee movement types so there's like very little restrictions on this this skill is just nuts so this is only on fallen byleth also close call four is the premier dodge b skill that i would say people are running we now have gambit four but that's a little bit more steep in price and we'll get to that in just a sec close call four i think is going to be more easy to spread out to the rest of your units and then of course times pulse 4 which is good on god swords and nuke units alike being able to just ramp this also shot up in value a ton with gambit 4 as well because if you've got a weapon with minus one special trigger and special acceleration you can run gambit 4 to get the full benefit of it the 50 percent dr and the 15 true damage and times pulse 4 essentially gives you minus one special trigger anyway so it's uh, this skill has actually gone up quite a bit in value as if it wasn't already valuable so all it would take is one fallen violet given to a gang lot and you're instantly off to the races you've got like this amazing build i have speed smoke 4 here actually instead of times pulse 4 and the reason why is because speed smoke is actually very efficient fodder it's very easy to get the level 3 variant of speed smoke 4 because all you got to do is sacrifice a four star chad and it's just going to make it that much easier and that much more consistent to be giving out your fodder yeah so consistency i think is also a very huge key and low investment cost to get these gold border skills close call for there are quite a few units that have dodge b skills that you can obtain from the four star special rate pulls so particularly on the arena four star special rate pull where you're guaranteed to get one I always pull red on that banner because there's just 
so many really good skills that you can get there for the level 3 variants and then use those units for fodder to easily pick up the gold border versions. So for example, Close Call 4 is on Marita. She is pretty easy to get. For, well, I, I shouldn't say easy to get, but she is a possible unit you can get on the Arena 4 Star banner. So I use all my Arena tickets to just pull red. There's also I Green and Keaton who have Special Spiral 3 and a bunch of other dodge skills, a bunch of units that have null follow-up, which also shot up in value because, of course, we have now physical and magical null follow-up. So I guess that's your first tip. <laughs> if you're pulling on that arena ticket banner, going for fodder and then going for red is going to give you the most bang for your buck. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at another unit here that's just a clinic of fodder we have Soren here the premier choice to give this guy's fodder to would be rearmed Ophelia I didn't pull her up because actually I probably should have pulled her up but it's fine like you, you you get what I'm trying to say here so flare here the prerequisite skill is noontime it's a 500 SP skill so its score is very high for arena it's not like the end-all, be-all, mage exclusive special we were hoping it would be. It's infantry locked, which hurts how many units are able to get it. And then also it doesn't do anything against damage reduction, which is another thing that we wanted. But it has a crazy amount of sustain, which I think is pretty good for a three-hit special. Not too many three-hit specials are dealing increased damage and then also recovering health. So it does have its uses. It's not like totally a waste. And then, of course, Soren also has Magic Null follow-up, and he's got Times Pulse 4. So this guy is just amazing for fodder. You can get all of his good stuff on a single unit. And like I said, <laughs> Rearmed Ophelia would be your girl for that. We can go ahead and close out Byleth and Soren since we talked about them already. Also, don't forget that we have a lot of good skills still in that Divine Code Shop. In the Tier 4 and Tier 3 Divine Code Shops, there are some really nice Gold Border skills that you can be getting. And I think absolutely 100% your rearmed heroes should be getting the first pick on which of those combat manuals you're going to be giving the inheritance to. So, for example, Godlike Reflexes and Vital Astra are both in the Divine Code Shop. If you have not already used them, then Ganglot is a pretty good unit to give it to. Even though Ganglot herself doesn't necessarily need to be speed stacking, it's just still really worthwhile to give it to her because then every Ganglot you pull from that point forward can just instantly build one of your other units in one shot. So that is something to keep in mind. And Godlike Reflexes and Vital Astra are for infantry melee only, which Ganglot, as I said, is the only one of that type at the moment. Okay, we also have Ivy over here. Ivy is also a clinic of good skills. She's got a lot of stuff you want to watch out for. Stillwater 4 has its uses, and we just recently got Stillwater 3 as a potential option. This one's a little bit more high cost. We'll talk about that as well, like which skills are obtainable, but still kind of high cost that you may want to make a couple of decisions on your own, whether or not that's going to be worth it. She has a Sabotage Attack in Res 3, which is also a pretty nice B-skill for high res units. And then Soaring Guidance, which is like... I mean, <laughs> to say this impacts your fights in Summoner Duels is putting it lightly. It's also very powerful for Aether Raids, both defense and offense. Just being able to warp, like, there's such a shortage of warp bubble effects that just warping is out of control and should be spammed to hell and back. So Ivy is another good unit to look out for. You can get all of her good stuff in one go. We have also the Duo Shamir. Now, I know Duo Shamir is a very phenomenal unit, and it's going to be very difficult to justify parting ways with her. But you look at the kit that she's got and how easy it is to actually get her stuff. So she has Deadeye, which the prerequisite is Glimmer. Very easy to get. There's a lot of units that have Glimmer in the 4-star and 3-star pool. She has Remote Sparrow, which is very, very strong. Gives you 30% DR and then attack and speed up 7 when you initiate. It's only for range units, but, I mean, range units getting free DR when they attack, especially for, like, glass cannon type units. This really helps them out and allows them to possibly survive the counter hit. 
combos really well with Brash Assault 4 as well, which does the same thing. It gives you damage reduction, and the damage reduction from Brash Assault 4 and Remote Sparrow will both stack together in order to augment the damage on your next attack from Brash Assault 4. It also gives you the guaranteed follow-up, so it, it's kind of like null follow-up a little bit. Not quite, but it can help break through wary fighter effects for units that may not be able to on their own. So you don't always have to have null follow-up. So Brash Assault and Remote Sparrow is a very devastating combo to give to a lot of player phase range units. And Brash Assault 3 and Swift Sparrow 2 are very, very cost-efficient skills. They're very easy to get. They are both available by 4-star demotes. Brash Assault from a 4-star Bar Tree, and then Swift Sparrow 2 from a 4-star Kiragi. So, th this is juicy, man. I, if I said you were killing off your Duo Shamir to get one skill on one unit, I mean, that's kind of questionable. But what if I told you you were just getting two skills that are really good and really cohesive and work really well together on all of your other units. And I really mean it this time because it's not difficult at all to be getting Swift Sparrow 2 and Brash Assault 3 prior to the Gold Border Inheritance. So you can just make sure you're always getting those on everybody. Very good. Also, Brash Assault 4 has no restrictions either. That's another tip-off in its favor is that it's basically able to be given to everybody. <laughs> so don't sleep on that and it certainly is worth considering at the very least and finally we have Lysi well I guess not finally I have one more other unit but Lysithia as well the tea time Lysithia she also has a clinic of really good skills so we take a look here she's got desperation 4 which desperation 3 is very easy to get so skills with low cost investment that you can still get the gold border I really like these for the rearmed heroes also, of course, Desperation 4 has, like, no restrictions on it. You can give it to everybody. So, very good stuff there. And then Attack and Speed Oath 4 is a little bit costly. It's similar to Stillwater 3 that we looked at on Ivy, where it is technically easy to get, but it does come at a little bit of a cost, and that cost is Heroic Rails or giving up on a potential merge project from the Tempest Trial units. So, you're going to have to come to that conclusion yourself, but... It's hard to argue with the value of Attack and Speed Oath 4. This is basically the best C skill for units that want to be stacking Attack and Speed. So, just some food for thought there. And then finally, the Bunny Bernie. She is the only unit in the game that comes with Escape Route 4. So, you would definitely get a lot of usage out of this. It's very easy to get Escape Route 3, and this skill can cheekily grant Kanto to basically everybody since it has no restrictions. Kanto pretty rare for infantry types, so this is a nice way to get it. Also, it lets you just jump around, which, as we mentioned earlier, warping effects are just disgusting. And she's also got Defense and Res Smoke 3, which I would say is probably my favorite of the Smoke Gold Border skills, because it, it just makes the most sense. It's the one that after you player phase, you're getting an effect that you would want to get after player phasing, like Pathfinder, for your other units to benefit from. Whereas the other ones like Speed Smoke 4 and Attack Smoke 4, the effects that you grant from those after attacking, you kind of want to get be getting those before attacking a little bit, like Dodge and the Nullify enemy follow-ups and the stat bonuses. So th this one is just a little bit more cohesive of a smoke skill, but still, the other smoke skills I'm not going to say are bad by any means. You can definitely get some good use out of Speed Smoke 4 as it grants Dodge to all sorts of different movement types that normally can't get dodge in the B skill. So just some examples there. I wanted to show off some units that maybe... Of course, there are more units as well that I didn't bring up that have a clinic of good fodder skills that you can inherit on the same unit, and these should be the first pick to give to your rearmed heroes. They also have very easy to obtain gold border skills. So just some food for thought, some things you may want to keep in mind. Now, of course... A skill like Attack and Speed Finish 4 is insanely meta. This is like one of the best ace skills ever. So th this is something you would want to be giving to rearmed heroes. I'm not going to tell you not to do that. But if we take a look at the units that actually learn it, there's really no easy way to get Attack and Speed Finish 3 at the moment. Unless you stockpiled a ton of baby Beccas, <laughs> you're not really going to have an easy time getting Attack and Speed Finish 4. And it's probably going to cost you an entire rearmed hero to inherit 
the level four version in one shot because you've got to get all three prerequisite skills first and then you can get the level four so just some more food for thought it it may be more worth your while to pick up something else that is more cost efficient like we brought up earlier such as remote sparrow which has a very easy prerequisite skill swift sparrow 2 and the final product a skill is quite strong still remote sparrow can really help out so Again, more food for thought, like you want to be paying attention to cost efficiency here and how often you'll actually be able to give out those skills that you're inheriting on the rearmed heroes. Gambit is another premier skill. Th this has blown me away, actually. I've After I started trying to build units and seeing like where this skill fits and how much it has an impact on those units you're putting it on and how different the playstyle is, this skill actually like is really good unfortunately there's no one else who has it besides this robin here he himself is a really powerful unit so it's hard to justify parting ways with him when all you're getting is one skill on a rearmed hero and from that point forward you'd only be able to get that one skill per copy of that rearmed hero i feel like it's just more valuable overall in the long run to grab something like this where you're just like getting everything in one shot look how easy this is attack and speed hexblade hexblade 3 is in the four star pool now on lapis escape route 4 has been there forever on cecilia and then attack and speed 04 if you want to sacrifice tempest trial units it's on ninja shamir and also holst so you could get all of this in one shot as opposed to getting like gambit 4 or remotes or um attack and speed finish four by like sacrificing an entire rearmed hero Th this seems more something you should be at least considering and thinking about by the way alchrist here attack and speed hexblade as we just brought up is very easy to get the level three now so <laughs> it's well worth getting rid of a legendary yuri to get this and it's like damn near the optimal a skill on all of your bow and dagger type units so this is Certainly something you may want to give to Alchrist here. Escape Route 4 gives Kanto to melee types, which is a pretty cheeky way to get it. And then Attack and Speed Oath 4 gives the jumping. So if you're going to like just invest in Alchrist, this is the type of skills you would want to give him to pass out to your other guys. We have also Rearm Krom here. This is like the god melee build now for Cav types. I'm in love with this build. So, Flared Sparrow, Flow Desperation, Alarm Attack and Speed. You get Kanto, you get Desperation, you get Flared Sparrow, which melts the enemies. And then, you could also pick up his sword as well, if you're talking about a sword cavalry type. So, for example, the Bride Flavia, or also um, Kent, who is not too shabby at all for a Demote 4-star. You could get all of this stuff in one shot. So every single time you pull a copy of Fallen Krom, you're just decking out an entire unit with a full build. And it's very easy to get this stuff, like I said. So more food for thought. We have also the Arcane Grima here. She's pretty interesting because she's the only armored and all also the only dragon rearmed hero right now. So there's a lot of good stuff you can get on her. She defaults with Hardy Fighter. I didn't want to give her like a different B skill. I don't think the dragon gold border B skills age that well. So things like Dragon's Wrath 4, Dragon's Ire 4, there's definitely better options now. Hardy Fighter is still rearing its ugly head on a lot of armored units. So Hardy Fighter is definitely in there. And I really like Fire Flood Boost as well. It has a very lenient condition. You need either Fire Boost 3 or Water Boost 3. And there are two 4-star units that have that. So... It's very easy to get, and then it inflicts guard, it gives you HP up 5, and then it gives you double stats plus 7, attack and res. So this is really nice for armored units, and when we get the attack and speed variants of this as well, I'm really looking forward to that one. So we can give god swords guard and just give them attack and speed up 7 and HP up 5. Very, very nice skill from the boost 3s. So you'd be able to get this, the level 3 gold border of this, and then hardy fighter in one shot, because... Hardy Fighter, you got to pick up from level 1 all the way up to level 3 with her. You could also go for Armored Beacon and Hardy Fighter. So, just some ways to optimize your Fallen Robin there. And then finally, of course, Tana, who is able to get Guidance 4 and Soaring Guidance. She also could be really nice with Remote Sparrow and Brash Assault 4, because flying units 
that are player phasing are going to want a build like this. Flying units for the range types don't really have an ideal B skill at the moment, so Brash Assault 4 actually works out pretty well for them, giving them the DR, the augmented damage, and the guaranteed follow-up. And then Remote Sparrow just helps combo with that nicely. So Tana can really deck out some units. Also, another good thing to give her is Firestorm Dance 3, because <laughs> a lot of dancers are going to be wanting Guidance 4 and Soaring Guidance and the new Gold Border Dance skill. So, just another rearmed hero with some example skills you can deck them out with. Now, we're just going to go ahead and go down the line and take a look at some passive skills that I would say are pretty good inherits and have very lenient prerequisite skills that you'll be able to easily pass out. Times Pulse 4, I brought this up. It's, it's another, like, really coveted skill, but if you take a look at the list of units that have it, there's nothing that's particularly easy to obtain. So, no Grail units, no... 4-star demotes, so it's going to come at a little bit of a cost to get Times Pulse 4, and you're not always going to be able to pick it up until you just, like, wait for a while until you're able to pull some of these other 5-star exclusives. So, Times Pulse 4, while super valuable, and I absolutely recommend giving to a rearmed hero, you gotta still weigh your options there with how cost-effective it actually is. Okay, so Attack and Speed Bond, well, Unity presumably unity is the actual thing i wanted to mention here because unity stacking and legendary robin are quite powerful and it's very easy to get attack and speed bond three there is a very simple unit you can inherit it on from the four star kent who is available all you'd have to do is level him up to a five star which is fine and attack and speed bond three can get you unity very easily so unity also having no restrictions whatsoever Makes it a very optimal skill to be giving to rearmed heroes. Same thing with attack and defense, unity, or bond 4. Bond 4 is actually okay on armors if you want. Because they're forced to be adjacent when they use save skills. So it's not the worst. And just like unity, it's quite easy to obtain. We have Basilio here in the 4 star and 3 star pool that has attack and defense bond 3. So it's not difficult at all to get attack and defense unity. Sorcery Blade, like I brought up earlier. Hexblade, attack speed Hexblade on Legendary Yuri is ideal and optimal on a lot of bow and daggers. So this being available on 4-star Lapis gives a lot of value to this. Next up, we have Bracing Stance. So the level 2 is obtainable from Benny, who is in the 4-star pool. And it's a very strong skill for your bait units. Just gives them defense and res up 6 and inflicts guard. Very nice for armor tanks that have safe skills. All right, Water Boost, as I mentioned earlier, and Fire Boost are the prerequisites for Flood, Fire Flood Boost 3. So this one comes on Mustafa. You can use him. He's a 4-star and 3-star, or you can also go for a 4-star Ross. Ross has a little bit of an edge because you don't need to get him to 5-star to get the level 3. So <laughs> this will also play in when we get the Attack and Speed boost skill level three you're going to be able to use fire boost three as a prerequisite too so yeah ross stocks have gone up significantly now swift sparrow of course they released like a bajillion variants of swift sparrow too we have remote sparrow we have flared sparrow we got surge sparrow swift sparrow three itself <laughs> so it's very easy to get swift sparrow too you can get it from either a where is this guy? Four-star Kiragi? Well, you'd have to level him up to five-star, but that's fine by me. And there's another one that has it as well. We have Luthier in the four-star pool also. So you got two possible units that could be giving Swift Sparrow two, which makes it very premier fodder for your rearmed heroes. Sturdy Stance three as well. So Altena is the one who has Sturdy Stance two at four-star. You'd be able to easily get this for your armored bait units. We have Mirror Stance three also. So, Mirror Stance 2 can be gotten from a 4-star Sylvia. You'd have to level her up to 5-star, but that's fine. We'll, we'll take the cost efficiency on skill fodder much more readily than the Feather investment there. And then finally, for A skills, we have Life and Death 4, which is a pretty good skill still for your AoE units. So, units like Bunny Sonia and etc. that want to just spam AoE attacks. It's easily obtainable from... Well, Hana is one, but it's also a four-star skill on Soth, who you don't have to level up to five-star to get. So, very easy, very lenient skill to just go ahead and pick up. 
So those are for A skills. Let's go ahead and take a look at some B skills now. Brash Assault, as I mentioned earlier. You're able to get the level 3 skill from Bartry. It's also on Altena and Hinata and Celeph too, but Bartry is the god here because he gets it at 4 star. Desperation 4, of course. No restrictions on this makes it really strong, and it's obtainable from Shanna Banana. So you get a 4 star Shanna, and you can go ahead and pass out Desperation 4 very readily, making Desperation 4 good for rearmed heroes. Escape Route 4, as we mentioned earlier, the Cecilia in the 4-star pool has this. Chad has it too, he's also a 4-star, and Marth, but those guys you gotta get to 5-star first, whereas Cecilia just instantly has it. Guard 4, pretty solid skill actually, it's not too bad for a B skill bait on bait units. You get attack minus 4 on the enemy, you're inflicting guard, and then you also get 30% DR on their first hit. No Restrictions gives this more utility, so you can put this on more varieties of units. And you get Guard version 3 from Leon in the 4-star pool, and also Luthier, who can get it at the 4-star level, doesn't need to be ranked up. So, pretty good stuff from Guard 3 there. You have Sabotage Attack Res, like I said, with Ivy. Sabotage Res is in the 4-star pool with Bastion, so you can go ahead and get that and... Put this on your high res units that want to be debuffing the enemies. We've got all of the seal skills. All of them I think are pretty solid and they're really clean to get because no restrictions whatsoever and they're pretty strong overall. They do a lot of stat drops. If the enemies have no active penalties, you can get as much as minus 11 to a stat. And then you're also inflicting guard if they do happen to have a penalty. So it just... You either get a massive amount of debuffs, or you're getting some solid debuffs, and you're still inflicting guards. So the seal skills are pretty nice, especially for winning stat checks like speed, or just lowering the enemy's defense so you hit harder. So for all of the seal skills, you're able to get really easily in the 4-star pool. George has seal attack 3 at 4-star, Seth has it at 5-star, Rebecca has it at 5-star, Katri as well, but George is your boy here. Seal Defense is available on Ares here. You, you would have to... Well, he gets Seal Defense Rest too. Let's see here. Obro would be your girl. She has it at 4 star. So Obro for Seal Defense 4. Roy as well, but you got to get him to 5 star. For Seal Res, you can get this one from the 4 star Corin, And also 4 star Ray. <laughs> yeah, Ray finally has a, a use here for your rearmed heroes. And then Seal Speed would be obtainable from either Est or also Thea. Well, no, Thea has a split one. So Est and then also Virion. Virion is your guy here. He's got it at 4-star, making it real easy. Speed and Defense Snag 4. I'm one of the few people, I think, that actually thinks this is solid. More so on units that can reposition and then act again. So Krom units that have that. Lucina units with Future Vision. They can just reposition, inflict a ton of debuffs. Sabotage is a really good status effect. And then, of course, with their reposition and swap effects that let them move again, they can really benefit a lot from this. So Snag Level 3 is obtainable from Kent in the 4-star pool. So that makes it really easy to get. And then finally, Wings of Mercy, which costs a Hinoka, but there's a lot of units that have this in the 4-star pool, like Kane, for example. Emerin also has it, Frederick's also got it, but Kane is the one because he has it at 3 star, or he has it at 4 star and makes it real easy to get. So that covers us for B skills, now let's go ahead and move on to C skills, and I know this is probably a lot of information, but I'm going to compile all of these skills, I'm going to make like a little list of all the skills that are gold border that you can get, and then they have really easy prerequisites. So I'm going to make that list, I'm going to post it in the description of this video, and I'll also post it as a pinned comment in this video. So if you can't remember all of the stuff we're going through here, then don't worry, the information will be readily available at your fingertips. So Menace Skills, I don't need to <laughs> get oblivion on my case about these. I actually like the Menace Skills for Arena Mode, where they score high, and Arena is like more of a casual, competitive type of mode. You can get away with a lot of stuff in Arena that you wouldn't be able to in AR or Summer Duels. So, Attack and Defense Menace can definitely get some work in, in Arena mode. And you're able to get Threaten Attack and Defense 2, which is the prerequisite skill, pretty easy. It's available on Atlas, who is in the 4-star pool. 
So that would be an easy way to get it. You could also get it from Petrine and Yenfei if you don't plan to build them. They are in the Grail shop. All right, attack and res Oath 4. As we said, Oath 4s are really powerful, so getting Oath level 3 would be very good for this. And as it just so happens, Dorothy comes with attack and res Oath 3. So <laughs> a lot of value there. Dorothy is a really nice merge project, though, as is Lapis, and both of them are very recent. So you'll have to sacrifice a little bit, but one or two copies of those two to get really god-tier skills on your other guys I don't think is that big of a concern. Cross Spur Attack, of course, really nice for dancers, particularly the ones that have column effects that boost stats, like Duo Peony, Regular Peony, Triandra as well, if you can line her up with the enemies. Spur Cross Spur Attack just gives attack up 5 with an unlimited range, so that's nice. And the units who get the level 3 Spur Attack are Barst, who is very easy to get. He's also got Reposition, so a lot of people are very familiar with Barst. I'm sure there are other units that have it, but r really we just need to take a look at Barst. He's the one and done guy for that. Defense and Res Smoke 3. You can get it from having Res Smoke 3 or Defense Smoke 3. And Defense Smoke 3 is readily available. You just gotta level up a Wrath to 5 star and then you're good to go with that. Infantry Speed Tactic. Pretty strong skill. Gives you attack or it gives you speed up 6 if you meet the tactic skill requirement. And then null follow up to infantry allies as a status, which is really nice. And Speed Tactic 3 is obtainable from a 4-star Dwyer. And I believe that's it. Yeah, so Dwyer, you'd have to get him a 5-star, but still, it's certainly worthwhile and very efficient fodder to be getting Infantry Speed Tactic. Speed and Defense Menace, again, another Menace skill for Arena Mode. You can get Threaten Speed and Defense from a Gi in the 4-star pool. He's pretty easy to get, and he's been around for a while. And then finally, Speed Smoke 4, which I would say is certainly the best of the easily obtainable C skills we just looked at. You can get, you can actually run this in like AR and Summoner Duels, so it, it has more value than Menace for sure. And it's easy to get because Chad is in the 4-star pool and he comes with Speed Smoke 3. So there we go for all the C skills. Now we're going to take a look at a little bit higher investment skills. These ones are particularly going to be like on the grail units so you, you'd have to either spend your copies and not go for merges on those units or you'd have to spend a light amount of grails now i don't recommend going too crazy with these skills even though they are like insanely strong alarm attack speed is premier for cavalry types attack speed oath is premier for infantry and flyer types of course so you, you definitely want to consider trying to get these but i wouldn't go too crazy with the grail investment so for Attack and Speed 03, there are two units that have it in the Grail Shop. Those are Holst and also Ninja Shamir. So how many Grails do you justify going in to get level 4 03? I, I think it's definitely worth considering at least. I know we're shortaged on Grails and we need them to build our merge projects, but getting good skills is part of building units too, right? So I, I do think there is value here, even though it does come at a little bit more of a cost. I would not recommend going higher than two copies. So the first copy would be 100 Grails, the second would be 150. Luckily, there's two units in the Grail Shop that have it, so that would be four copies at a reasonable price in the Grail Shop for Attack and Speed 03. And then also, if you just saved up your copies of these guys when they reran, then you would have even more copies to give out. So that should seal the deal for Attack and Speed 04. Alarm attack and speed is on Rouse attack and speed 3, which we can obtain from a Hans in the Grail Shop. It's also on Bride Flavia, who's a 4-star demote, but she's not always available, so Hans is definitely a worthwhile option for that. We have Guidance 3, which is available on the Bride Larum. She's not bad of a merge project, but I mean, the impact that Guidance 4 has on your units in Summoner Duels and AR is way too huge. So I would recommend at least the first two copies of Larum being sold off for fodder for Tana there. Soaring Guidance needs Flyer Guidance. Kind of unfortunate that it didn't just use Guidance 3 as well. That would have been amazing if you could have gotten both Soaring Guidance and Guidance 4 in one shot. But Flyer Guidance 3 is available in the shop too. You can get it from Travent who is... He actually got a really nice refine, so that is a shame. But Flyer Guidance is so powerful, you definitely want to at least consider it. 
And then finally, Stillwater 4, if you don't want to use life and death, like for high attack, high res mages that want to nuke, this is definitely better for them. And you can get this from the new Tail 2 that we got on the Tea Time banner. So she's in the Grail shop and she has Stillwater 3. So that covers us just about for all of the premier fodder skills, all the different types of fodder skills you can go for. And I would certainly say that managing your fodder well, keeping in mind like how efficient the costs are, like Speed Smoke 3, as we mentioned earlier, is way easier to get than something like Attack and Speed Finish 3. So skills like that are what you want to be giving to your rearmed heroes. That's going to wrap us up for this video, guys. Like I said, it's a lot of information, so I'm going to compile a list and post it in the description and also in a pinned comment so you guys can take a look at more easily. And this is your boy Tacho signing out, so take care, fellas, and make sure you use those rearmed heroes wisely.